you've made a sale. I think those are the nicest words you could possibly hear in the print-on-demand universe. And on TeePublic, I've sold hundreds of designs. Here's one that says a mug, $3. This one I just made just a couple minutes ago. This said four times sticker for $2. So there's a few reasons I like TeePublic. Really, you know, TeePublic is a great print-on-demand resource. It's owned by Redbubble, but it's completely separate. So you'd have to set up your own username, your own account, and your own password. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this video. It's completely free to use TeePublic, which means you can set up a t-shirt shop for free. It's just really your time and energy that's at play here. There's also very good SEO for TeePublic. And all SEO means is search engine optimization. Here on Google, I've typed in funny t-shirt. I've hit the little shopping button and we can see here there's a whole bunch of different results from a whole bunch of different companies and TeePublic is right there at the top. And it's also right here. And as we can see, TeePublic keeps popping up again and again and again as we keep going through here. So yes, it competes with Spreadshirt and Etsy, but TeePublic keeps coming up and they have a really good SEO. Another thing I like about TeePublic is that the prices are fixed. And what I like about that is it's a really simplified, streamlined website. You don't need to worry about margins. You just have to upload some designs. Really, there's two things here to be successful on TeePublic. Just like I mentioned, number one, you want to create designs. So you can use public domain photos. You can do funny text designs. You can even take your own photographs with your own camera and use that to create designs. Then number two, you want to upload those designs into TeePublic and you'll have to modify them into different products. But that's what this walkthrough is about. So if you're a beginner and you're thinking about starting up on TeePublic, but you just haven't jumped in yet, let's do a nice walkthrough here, step by step. I'll show you exactly what you need to do to succeed. And by the way, I've got three tips at the end of this video that you'll find helpful. Very simple tips on how you can get your t-shirt business to the next level and make some sales like I do. Let's jump in and have some fun with TeePublic. All right, so it's pretty easy here to get started. I'm on tpublic.com. Over on the right-hand side, there's a sign up button and a login button. Now I'm gonna click the login button because I already have an account, but obviously you would click the sign up button here. And then from here, you'd enter your first name, your last name, your email address. You'd select what country you're from, a password, and then you would select create my account. And by the way, if you're interested, this, yes, I'd like to advertise my products in offsite marketing. You can check that or uncheck that if you want. The reason you would check it is offsite marketing drives more sales because they push through third-party ad platforms. So for example, those Google ads that I was showing, that you would have to opt in on that. I would recommend that you click this, but again, teach their own. All right, so we're gonna set up this account here and we'll then log in. Okay, when you first log in, your very first time, you're gonna see a page that kind of looks like this. And over on the right, you're gonna see my account, uploaded the design, and then your account here in messages. And then you're gonna see this weird make a thousand dollars thing. I'm just gonna click the make a thousand dollars thing just right away so we can get that that off the table. If you refer a friend who becomes a tea public designer, you'll get a dollar for every product they sell. So it's like an affiliate thing. You don't need to worry about this stuff when you see make a thousand bucks. I mean, obviously if you want to share it, go ahead. You're also going to see this uploaded design. So I just went up to my account and you're going to see uploaded design. You're going to get really excited and you're going to want to upload designs right away. I would encourage you to skip that for now and jump into your account because what you want to do now with your account then this is a brand new account. So obviously I've got zero everything here. You want to enter in your PayPal address here or your Payoneer address to make sure that you get paid. So for your PayPal address, enter in your email and click save. Now you get paid on the 15th of every month for the previous month. So for the last few years, every time the 15th of the month rolls around, I get all excited because I get a PayPal payment in my PayPal account. You can also access your earnings report down here at the bottom. You can click it and there's a spreadsheet that opens up and it'll show you what you've sold to date. Okay, so let's jump in and get going here with uploading some designs. Over here, I'm just gonna hover over my account and then I'm gonna click on upload a design and I'll click on that. It says you're new here. So I'm gonna pick my store name and I'm just gonna type in Zen Water Cooler. And we'll see if that store name is already in use. Oh, hey, look at that. The store name is available. Then it says, take me to the uploader. 
Okay, now notice it says here PNG. That's the type of file that you want to upload. And the reason for that is very important. A PNG file has a transparent background. And you're going to see why that's important in just a second. So I'm going to click this button now and I'm going to upload a PNG file. Now, because this is a deep dive video for beginners, I want to show you exactly how to create it. Now, I happen to be using Photoshop, but if you're in Affinity Photo, Affinity Design, Inkscape, whatever program you're using, I just want to show you, I'm not joking around here, it's 5,500 by 5,500, 300 pixels per inch. And then when I click OK, that gives me a pretty big palette here to work on. Okay, so there's my design. As you can see, there's no background. It's clean. And I'm going to save this now as a PNG and, I'm, and then I'm going to upload it to T Public. Okay, so we've uploaded our design here. And as you can see, the background is checkered, which is, means there's no background. You can also, if you don't, if you don't think you've uploaded the right artwork, you can also click this change artwork and just re-upload it. Now you may see this as well. It says your artwork is not large enough to support all of our wall art options. The largest size your image supports is extra large. It's kind of weird because we did upload a design that was larger than what this was. So what I would recommend is if you're really into uploading wall art and you need a larger one, go for it. If you want to do 7,000 by 7,000, 10,000 by 10,000, whatever you want to do, whatever your uh, you know, Photoshop or Affinity Photo will support. For me, I haven't sold barely any wall art. It's mostly t-shirts, stickers, and mugs. So I just upload this size and I go, if somebody needs a larger size, I don't know, they can contact me, I guess. In any event, we've uploaded the design here and then we're going to give our design a name. So I'm going to write in funny parrot t-shirt mug coffee mug and you'll notice I'm listing the products. This is a, kind of an annoying feature on TeePublic, but because the title is part of this SEO, I actually do write these in here. Hood, apparel, hoodie, sticker, gift. And then I'm actually going to put the actual phrase in here too. So I'm going to write, Polly wants you to go away. So it's a really long design title. And if you've got multiple designs, you may want to just control A this, which copies everything copy it and then what you can do is you can have like a little template in a word document or something like that now over here it says description describe your design i'm going to just write funny parrot design does this design contain mature content no this is extremely immature so i'm going to write no it does not contain mature content and main tag i'm going to write funny and what it should do is come up with a list here. You can see underneath it, there's a bunch of suggestions. I would recommend that you take advantage of that. It's trying to give you like an autocomplete. So as I type in funny parrot, you'll see here it says funny parrot. I'm going to select that. Now there's 15 other tags you can do. And you'll notice as soon as I just click this button, it tries to come up with relevant tags. So I just click it and then it just comes up again, click it, comes up again. So tagging is actually really easy in this case. Now you could bypass this. I could write in something really specific like red parrot gift for grandfather, for example. But you'll notice nothing's auto-completing. And so chances are, like, I wouldn't recommend having all your tags look like that. What I would recommend is just clicking off of the list. And as a result, you'll get most of the 15 that you need to get right there because this is a pretty nice, easy to use interface. Okay, now when you read your 15 tags, it will tell you, it'll say, hey, you've met the tag limit. So I can't add any more. When I click on these, nothing happens. So I've got 15 tags now and I've got the main tag up there. What will happen sometimes too is as you're adding in other tags, it will tell you and it'll update the main tag. So if you see that, don't freak out. It's just trying to tag these things as smartly as possible. And I would recommend trusting TeePublic in that uh, area. Okay, now down at the bottom here, we've got other products. So when you click on the apparel button, you're going to see the t-shirt show up and you can move the design now around inside the t-shirt. You want to be really careful that you don't go outside the bleed area and that's that dotted rectangle. So if you move it and you're like, uh-oh, I'm not sure what's going on here. There's tools down at the bottom. You can center it 
and then you can also have it be flush with the top. So I'm just going to move this down very, very slightly and I'm just going to make sure it's centered and that looks really good. You can also make it larger or smaller. So if your design is, you know, comes in kind of tiny, you can try to make it a bit larger or if you don't want it right to the bleed, you can monkey around with it. So that looks good. I'm just going to make sure it's centered and that's what it's going to be. Now here at the top it says t-shirt default color and I can pick my default color and it actually if I highlight over these will show me different options. Be very careful about what you select here for your color because if you select the default color it will update all the other ones as best as possible. So for example when I select white you notice down here at the bottom now all of these have been selected white. So if you select the wrong color, if you select pink and you go, oh, that looks great, notice these have all stayed white. So you just want to make sure that the color you, you have, hover over it first and then select it and that'll be a big time saver. Otherwise, you have to go in here and select each one. There's also on the t-shirt, this is pretty cool, you can actually get a print on the back and a print on the front and the back. Now that will greatly affect your price, okay? So you want to only have stuff on the front most of the time, but if you had another shirt with something funny, you'd put it on the back or you'd put it on the front and the back. For hoodie, you'll have to select a default color and white is not one of them. So I'm going to select vintage Heather and then baseball tee, I'm going to select the white in the middle with black sleeves. Again, it's personal preference. I do want to point out for t-shirt, for example, I'm just selecting the default color. All of these colors are now available. So what I could do is I can just simply select all and all of the colors will be selected. So you do have the option to turn off colors if you're adamant that you don't want that. So for example, I've got a really dark vintage black t-shirt here. Maybe I don't want that. I can uncheck it. I'm not a big fan of unchecking anything. Who am I to say what somebody wants to buy? So I just select, make sure they're all selected and then they can pick as needed. As I scroll down, there's other products as well. So the apparel is now good. We're good to go. Now I'm going to click stickers and I'm going to scroll up and stickers gives me a few different options now. So the stickers gives me the option to do die cut design only, die cut design and background color, which is white, or a rectangle. I personally like the rectangle a lot and I'm going to keep it like that. You can also make them slightly more like a rectangle. So you can monkey around with that as well. I like one for one and you can change it here uh, if you need to, which is really nice. From cases, you're going to see two options. Now you have phone cases and then you have this like pouch thing. And again, you can just move them up or move them down as needed. Most of the time they will be centered correctly, but I would recommend clicking on them to make sure. Here's mugs. And you'll notice they've actually got this better than Redbubble in my opinion. They've put it over on the left. I have not touched this. And you can see now it's on the left-hand side of the mug, which is perfect if you're right-handed. I could move this if I wanted, but you'll see it does greatly affect where it's placed. So I like the idea that it's there. It shows me exactly where it should be. And I'm going to put it right there and just leave it alone. Here's the other one, which is a tumbler, and it's already set up good to go. So I have not touched these at all. If you want to update the background color on any one specific product, you could. So for example, in this tumbler over here on the right, like a coffee, you know, tumbler, I could click this tools and I could actually select a different background if I wanted. So you can make things a bit different if you like. I prefer to just keep them all the same. And if you want to have, say, a pink design or a black design, just upload a second design. And that way it gives customers maximum options on what they want. For wall art, there's really nothing here to do. You could turn on this full bleed, which means it'll go right out, or you can turn it off and it gives you a nice border. There's also orientations of portrait and landscape. And then again, similar to the stickers, you can monkey around with the aspect ratio. I'm just going to leave all this alone. For notebooks, these look pretty good too. There's hard cover and then there's soft cover. You're going to run into this problem once in a while where the design looks great on a t-shirt, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't translate perfectly to like a, you know, a book like this. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller, just move it over a tiny bit, just so it's not touching the rings. Same thing here. I'm going to move this, make it a bit smaller, move it over a tiny bit to the right. For pillows, one of my favorites, that pillow looks great, but again, same deal. You could make this larger or smaller if you wanted. Sometimes if the design comes in large, it touches the edges. So just make sure that the design is centered and there's a little bit of border around the edge of the pillow, which is nice. 
for tote bags. Man, I'm lucking out. All of these look great. Sometimes they don't. So again, if it's too big or too small, then you can just adjust it to fit as needed, which is great. There's also tapestries, which are like curtain, big things you hang in like a window or on like a, po it's like a poster, but it's made of cloth. So here's the tapestries. Again, you can move stuff around as needed and you can center them again as needed. Pins. You can wear a pin because the tail's cut off there. I'm just going to make this a tiny bit smaller and I'm just going to move that up. Magnets. Very similar to stickers. One of my favorite things with magnets is they actually have a circular option, which I really like. Uh, they do have rectangles and they do have die cut designs, but I would really encourage you to look at the rectangles and the circles because I think it makes a robust magnet and it looks great on a fridge. I've actually bought these and I really like the circular magnets. That's just a personal preference. And then there's the masks. I'm sorry to be a downer, but if we're still in the pandemic at the time of this recording, Here's our options now to wear masks. So we have masks here and you can see we can move around how it looks. Very similar, very easy to use interface, which I really, really like. Now that's it. So we've got through all of the different products and you know, I, I would recommend go back to apparel and just double check these product colors are all turned on. That's one thing, especially if you're uploading a lot, you can overlook that very quickly. So we've got all of this on. You'll notice my Walmart, my wall art for some reason is off. So I'm going to check that back on, make sure all of these are on. And then I've read and agreed, agreed to the terms and conditions and I'll click publish. And there we go. Congratulations to me. There's a t-shirt now that's up. We can see here all the different colors that are available and I can select a classic t-shirt, a v-neck t-shirt. There's a bunch of different options. So there's, I really do like the t-shirts here on TeePublic. I mean, it is in their name, so hopefully they know what they're doing. But here you can see the price of the t-shirt. Now I'm in Canada, so it's Canadian prices, but you can see the price here is basically significantly reduced. It's about uh, a third off. And so it's for $17, I can now get this t-shirt in a number of different colors. And one of the most popular colors on TeePublic are these things called heathers. And heathers are like, um, sort of like blended in colors. And so if you're looking at buying a sample on TeePublic, these Heather uh, colors are really nice. They really pop, which I, which I like. Okay, so you can see here, there's a sale save 38% for the next two days, 23 hours. And it's counting down, which is very dramatic. But now this will sit in my storefront for the next two or three days on sale, and then it will jump up to full price. If you wanna see your store, then over at the top here, you hover over my account, and then you can then click on storefront, which is down at the bottom. And when I click on storefront, we'll see now my storefront is now live. There's one design and I've got this storefront now sitting here. So this is here where you update your storefront. Now you have a background image and you'll notice as I hover over it, it says upload new cover photo. And when I hover over this little robot, it says upload new icon. So all you need to do is just select a square photograph for your, up, for your icon. I'm going to click on this. And you can see here, it gives you the sizes, 324 by 324 or larger. So basically it just needs to be a square. I'm gonna click browse and just select my little logo. So there's my logo, I'm gonna click submit. That one that I used just happened to be a thousand by a thousand. And then here for the cover photo, I'm gonna click the little pencil and it's going to say a thousand by 300 or larger. What I would recommend is having a really nice not just some random design, but having maybe a pastiche of all of your designs, have your email on there, say, you know, I do custom designs. And you know, that way you can really use this storefront to your advantage. Put your email address in there. So make a thumbnail photo of your actual storefront. So I don't have a lot of designs yet to showcase in my banner, but I do want to put something up there. So I just put my name up there and a nice little background. I'm going to click submit and I used exactly 1000 pixels by 300 pixels. So I'll just click submit and that'll be a nice background now for my storefront. So I've got one design, it's on sale, there's my banner and there is my icon. There's another way that you can upload designs and it's the multi uploader. So I'm gonna click on my account. I'm gonna hover over that and click upload a design. So I can click the PNG button to upload one image or I can use this multi-file uploader. So if you're wondering what that is, when you click the multi-file uploader, you can now click the PNG, but you'll notice it's multiple PNGs and you can upload multiple files all at once. So I'm gonna click that. 
So I picked three files for this example, and all that's gonna happen is it's just gonna upload all three, but it's gonna ask me to upload and like tag one at a time. So that I don't really see a lot of point in this because if you get bogged down at anywhere during the process, your entire work will be for naught because you'll have to go back and like redo stuff. So I like uploading things one at a time, but here we can see I've uploaded three files that are popping open and I'm gonna click get started. So you think, oh, I can tag all three at the same time. The answer is no. I'm gonna click get started and we'll see the first one is gonna pop up now. So here's my first design and it's just says Toronto with a flag. So I'm gonna tag everything here. So as you can see here, it says currently editing design one of three. There's no, there's no reason to upload all three at once because I'm still going through now and making sure every single thing is, you know, correct. Like for example, my Toronto image is stuck on the end of the mug here. So I'm going to move this over. So it's like that, uh, you know, so you're still going through one at a time. I don't really see a huge advantage to using the bulk uploader, but again, to each their own. And, you know, I certainly don't want to tell you what to do, but if you're asking me my opinion, this isn't really a, a huge time saver. You're still going through individually and getting it done. Okay, so I've got my last design of the three uploaded, currently editing design three of three. I scroll on down to the bottom. I'm happy with everything. I click the publish all button and that will publish all three of my designs that I've uploaded. So now we can see I've got four designs. Three of them are Canadian flags and one of them is my hilarious poly design. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is going in and making albums. So you can manage your store right at the top. So it says manage my store, upload a design, manage my albums, sort all designs. I'll just click on the sort all designs really quickly. So what you can do is you can move stuff around and you can just position them. So let's say you really wanted to have the poly design first in your storefront. You can just move it around. And now you can see Polly's up front here. Now I will say as you make sales, people can click on newest or popular so they can see what designs are most popular on your store. I'm just going to do a very quick example of this. I'm going to type into here, um, funny cat, for example, and this will be a bunch of funny cat designs. So I'm going to click on this one. I work on computers. This is just a random one that I'm seeing here and I can see shirt T that is the storefront that's holding this design. So Shirt T has 367, and I can actually sort on popular, and I can see exactly what is the best-selling design. Now, I don't know how many they've sold, but this is what T Public is telling me are the most popular designs, and it scrolls on down. I can also see newest, and I can see, so if I'm you know, stalking this person, I can see if they've uploaded anything new as well. So popular and new are two pretty good options. I'll go up to my account and I'll go into storefront and this is gonna take me to my storefront and only in my storefront does it give me the option now to manage my albums. So I'm gonna click here, manage my albums. And from here, I'm gonna create a new album and I'm gonna call it Canada A and it'll be active and I'll create the album. And then from there, I can select which designs I would like to include in that album. So obviously I'll select these three, add it to album, and then I'll click save album. So now when I view my storefront on the top right, I've actually got an album sitting here on the left. So albums are very similar to in Redbubble, they call them collections. On TeePublic, they call them albums. So if you've got, say, a thousand designs here, a customer can click on the album and they would see exactly what's in your album. They wouldn't see all of your designs. They would simply then click the X button next to the album to remove that filter. And that's really what it is, is a filter. And then all of the designs would come back. Very nice feature for customers to view products. Okay, so that pretty much covers the nuts and the bolts on how to set up a T Public store. However, this is Zen Water Cooler, which means I'm gonna scream into the microphone three tips on how you can make more sales. And that's really what it comes down to. Now look, these are really basic tips. Tip number one, quantity. The more designs you upload, the more chances you have at making sales. 
Strive to get a hundred uploaded when you first start. Eventually you want to strive to have a thousand or more designs on TeePublic because again, you're competing with a lot of other people. Tip number two, you want to make sure that your quality is there. So take a look at other designs that are best sellers and all you would do to find best selling designs is simply type in a search term and whatever comes back, that's the most relevant. Now you can select new, but you want to look at relevant because that's the designs that T Public thinks are the best to help you make sales. Tip number three, niche research. You want to make sure that you're not just doing funny cat designs or New York City designs or gaming designs because those are super popular and you're never going to make a sale unless you get lucky. So you want to look at niches that are not you know, they're not like, you don't want to do something that's so random that nobody's going to click on it. Like you don't want to do, you know, plumber in Nebraska working night shifts on the weekend. Like that's way too niche, but you'd want to do something that's a little bit niche down. Now I have lots of videos about niche research on the Zen water cooler channel. So check it out. Now I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. As always, please do like, please do subscribe. I'd love to hear a comment or a question down below. And maybe if you're looking at the comments, you'd want to answer a question as well. It doesn't need to be me. We're a big community here helping each other out. Check out this video as well if you're having trouble seeing the search option in T Public. If you're creating a new store and you're searching for your designs and you don't see them come up, you'll want to click on this video. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. Take care.